Road to 2023. 30 Influential Politicians to Watch. Please, make sure you subscribe to this channel, and also give us a thumbs up. Also share our contents with family and friends. Number 1. Muhammadu Buhari. Him not making this list would be very shocking to anyone who understands politics in Nigeria. In 2019, President Muhammadu Buhari was re-elected for a second and final term in office courtesy of his deep-rooted support from northern Nigeria, just as it has been the case in all the elections he has contested in, he generated 77% of the 15 meters votes he pulled in that election from northern Nigeria. It is no longer news that the man who hails from Dora in Castina state enjoys cult-like followership in north. Only a few northerners like Amadou Bello and Aminu Kano comes close in matching his popularity. His perception as an anti-corruption Caesar who leaves a modest life has kept him in the hearts of northern Nigerians. Yes, it is true that the 79-year-old would not be on the ballot for the first time since 2003, however, his influence would still be the biggest force to be reckoned with as far as the 2023 election is concerned. As the preparations for the next presidential election which is slated to hold in February 2023 hits top gear, the big question is on the lips of every political analyst is, who is RH likely winner of the ongoing squabble to inherit the Buhari bloc vote? Yes, getting the entire votes may not be realistic, however a good percentage of this votes would be intact, and the president would most likely allow someone have it. To further explain this, Muhammadu Buhari is a politician that even opposition politicians sometimes go as far as adding his pictures to their campaign materials just to win elections. Anybody that has been following proceedings would agree that now, President Muhammadu Buhari appears deeply entangled in a dilemma of choosing his successor. One thing is certain, would not be an easy one and as it has always been the case with him, Baba Go Slow, would surely not allow anyone rush him. He has been keeping his cards very close to his chest and it is expected that he would deliver the masterstroke. 2022 would surely reveal to Nigerians who the president would eventually get to support. One of the events that would help shape up this decision for President Buhari is the upcoming National Convention of the Ruling All Progressive Congress, APC, which has become long overdue haven been postponed severally. On the surface, it appears the proponents of these series of postponements have been doing so to push the uncertainties away, but the truth has remained that, rather than culminate in a drop in interest, the convention would eventually trigger regional and individual interests in the party who have been plotting their games behind the scenes. The events of the February convention would play a key role in determining who gets the blessing of the president when Nigerians go to the polls 2023. A few days ago, the president made certain comments which can loosely be interpreted that he has made up his mind but wants to be discreet about his plans. Again, Another interesting angle to this is that, as far as politics in Africa is concerned, it is very rare to see presidents allow free will or politicking among party members to choose him a successor. Going by his body language, Buhari appears prepared to take this path, however, despite all his efforts to stand above petty politicking within the APC, he is always caught up in its intricacies. This is often instigated by people who prefer dropping his name as a buffer. Finally, Buhari would be caught in a trap. He would have to make a choice between repaying the ACN bloc in the party which is led by the former governor of Lagos State, Bola Asiwaju Tanubu for their massive support in making him president, compensating a loyal lieutenant in Yemi Osinbaho, supporting a cabal-backed Goodluck Jonathan or any of the aspirants eyeing his seat. It wouldn't be an easy decision but whatever it would be, Nigerians would find out in the coming months. Number 2. Atiku Abubakar. 
following his two previous failed attempts to pick the presidential tickets of the Social Democratic Party PDP, and the People's Democratic Party PDP, in 1992 and 2011 respectively against the clamor for Southern Presidency which was popular at those times, Nigeria's former Vice President Atiku Abubakar is gearing up to once again swim against the heavy tide and throw his heart in the ring to secure the PDP ticket for 2023 general election. Whether or not he would be successful on his third attempt is completely down to the dynamics, but one thing is certain, his chances are great. Atiku Abubakar is no new name to the Nigerian political scene. He is a politician, widely connected businessman and a philanthropist. Born on 25 November 1946, the ex-official of the Nigerian Customs Service is a politician with wise reach and contacts in every part of Nigeria, any time and day. Atiku has often been criticized for his inconsistent stand on zoning. It is a known fact that he had contested the presidential primary nomination process on two different occasions when the mood of the country appeared to be in support of a power shift to the southern part of the country. For emphasis, in 1992, he contested for the ticket of the Social Democratic Party, SDP, and came a distant third after Chief Moshud Abiola and Ambassador Babagan Akinjab. In 2011, he repeated the gamble by playing the same card when he sought for the presidential ticket of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, with former President Goodluck Jonathan which he lost. Some people could argue that, on those two occasions, there was no binding zoning arrangement, this people could be right in every sense of it, it is dependent on perspective. In 2007, Following series of protracted misunderstandings between him and President Olushigan Abasanjo his then boss, Atiku armed himself be with the ticket of the Action Congress AC, and contested the presidential election in that year with the late President Umaru Musa Yaradua PDP, and the then candidate of the All Nigeria's People's Party ANPP, Major General Muhammadu Buhari RTD, he gave a good account of himself in that election but failed to clinch it. Fast forward to 2019, Tarakan Adamawa as he is often referred to, managed to secure the PDP ticket against a few influential figures such as Aminu Tambawal who was backed by the biggest fancier in PDP then, Governor, Nisum Waik, Rabiu Musa Kwankwaso and the then Senate President, Bakola Saraki. He ended up losing to President Buhari of the All Progressives Congress, APC, in an election that was marred by irregularities. It is very important to state that, when Atiku contested in both the 2007 and 2019 elections when Atiku it was indeed the turn of the North to the produce the president as far as the unwritten or gentleman agreement on zoning was concerned. Talking about not having a concrete stand on zoning, during the recent 94th National Executive Committee NEC, meeting of the opposition People's Democratic Party PDP in Abuja, Atiku argued that what Nigerians need at the moment is a president that will stand for the south and north of the country and not necessarily where the person hails from. What he practically did there was to dismiss the raging debate on zoning of the party's presidential ticket as workable solution to the leadership crisis present leadership crisis rocking the country. Many people would recall that on that same day, the former vice president further posited that whether the 2023 presidential ticket is zoned, it has never been the cause of the country's problem and it will it be the solution. This statement appeared to have irked a number of politicians especially from the southeast who have proven their loyalty to the PDP in at least five elections. One thing is certain. Those statements will come back to hurt Atiku's 2023 ambition and at the moment, he appears more than determined to swim against the brewing tide, if his body language is anything to go by. One thing no one can take away from the Waziri of Adamawa is that he is an astute politician of repute, and a detribalized Nigerian any time any day. He recently joked that keeping Nigeria united is possible because it has worked perfectly in his house where he has four wives at least one from every major ethnic nationality in Nigeria. Looking at his strengths, the former vice president is easily one of the two or say three northern politicians with contacts across the length and breadth of Nigeria any time any day. 
He is also a very liberal, open-minded, widely trusted and tested politician with no named history of religious bigotry as many of his northern counterparts do. Since all permutations sincere to be tilting towards having a southern president in 2023 in the interest of justice, fairness, and equity, what would happen in the next few months will settle the doubts in Atiku's capacity to successfully swim against the tide and withstand the storm. 2023 would be a major test for the 76-year-old politician. Within the PDP, Atiku would have to contend with several forces to clinch the ticket. It is understood that he has the backing of a number of PDP governors, however, the governor of Rivers State, Nisum Waiku might eventually make his presidential plans public might be a major stumbling block. But then again, Atiku who is a dogged fighter would not fear trying one more time. His addition on this list is nothing but deserving. Number 3. Bola Asiwaju Tanubu. The national leader or the All Progressives Congress, APC, Asiwaju Bola Tanubu has not made his perceived intention to run for the 2023 presidency public. However, his allies, friends, loyalists, supporters and body language have not managed to keep the ambition under wraps. Therefore many of his foot soldiers have embarked on early campaigns for him to succeed President Buhari as far as the 2023 election is concerned. It is true that Tanubu, the former number one man of Lago State, has at every forum re-echoed that the time is not yet ripe for 2023 politicking in order not to distract the president, however, every political watcher would notice that those around him have already moved to the fields and they're not doing this without his blessings. Many people would recall that, as soon as the 2019 elections were concluded, a Lagos-based group known as Tanubu 2023 Non-Negotiable, TNN, made itself public and began vigorous campaigns for him nationwide. This was why it didn't come as a surprise to many when a new group identified as Southwest Agenda, SWAGA, led by Senator Deo Adai came on board to intensify efforts, SWAGA which is made up of past and present governors, legislators and grassroots politicians had at a political meeting called on Tanubu to throw in his hat into the ring. Another pointer is that, recently a group of young Nigerian professionals unveiled a well-oiled political movement in Abuja with the sole mandate of working for the actualization Tinubu's presidential aspiration which the man from Bordelon has continued to downplay. The movement which was identified as Young Professionals for Tanubu 2023, presently has strong presence across the 36 states of the Federation and the FCT, and it was said to have been in existence for almost two years. Surely these things would not be happening with the consent and blessings of the Lagos landlord. Tanubu himself has just recently also recently begun a national tour which analysts believe are surreptitious moves aimed at selling himself to Nigerians and invigorate a mass appeal for him nationwide. The 69-year-old would have to clean himself up in the media if any positives would be expected from his ambitions. Recently there was a report that his Wikipedia profile was edited over 10 times just to tamper with his year of birth. He has always been alleged to have been involved in drug dealing during his time in the U.S. The former governor would also need to wash himself out of the numerous corruption scandals usually tied to his name. He surely understands that his biggest challenge to make his presidential ambition a reality in 2023 might be to survive the intrigues within the APC, a party he helped form and build and which he still leads. Going into 2023, he already knows his ambitions are being heavily battled against by several forces within the APC which includes high-ranking governors, Tanubu should know that he would have to overcome this threat if he would ever stand a chance of securing the party's ticket. One thing nobody can take away from Tanubu is his sagacity and political prowess, this is exactly why he has easily held a strong dominance on the politics of the Southwest from 1999 till date. He has always been a discomforting thorn in the PDP who was a ruling party in the center for most of those years. Nigerians would not easily forget how he battled it out with then-President Abasanjo and held his ground. Ever since he left office, 
he has managed to install all the governors that came after him in Lagos, till date. In fact, he has been able to replicate this in many other states right there in the southwest. He has fought so many battles, won some and lost some. How he would manage this surging one is what many political analysts are looking forward to. Tanubu is a very big politician to watch as far as the 2023 election is. Please, make sure you subscribe to this channel, and also give us a thumbs up. Also share our contents with family and friends.